A student in Australia could get expelled for criticizing the Chinese Communist Party. This is China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Imagine getting expelled from your university for exercising free speech and standing up for human rights. Well, that's what's happening to this guy, Drew Pavlou. He's a student at the University of Queensland, and his university wants to expel him for criticizing China. Just to be clear, his university is not in China, it's in Australia. Over the past year, Drew organized protests on campus in support of Hong Kong protesters and to criticize the Chinese Communist Party for human rights abuses. And pro-CCP students came out in force. Peaceful protest turns punch-up. <laughs> students scuffle on campus at the University of Queensland. The violence began with a face-off. It was definitely very heated. On one side, anti-communist China protesters rallying in support of Hong Kong independence. On the other, pro-Beijing students blast the Chinese national anthem. And get this, Drew Pavlou was punched and received death threats for him and his family. So what did the university do? They tried to silence him. That's because Australian universities have become very reliant on money from Chinese students. Approximately 10% of all students now attending an Australian university hail from China. International students from China typically pay full tuition, and a lot of universities have seen this as a win-win. Chinese students get the opportunity for a great education, and the university gets tons of money. But the problem is, the Chinese Communist Party has the power to turn off the taps. And that's made some universities afraid of angering the party. We investigated this two years ago when we went to Australia. And that's not all. There are 13 Confucius Institutes at Australian universities. These are institutes funded by the Chinese government to teach Chinese language and culture largely as a soft power propaganda exercise. The Australian government is currently investigating whether Confucius Institutes require registration as a source of foreign influence. So Australian universities are facing both economic pressure and academic freedom issues with China. But instead of putting in safeguards to prevent getting pressured by a hostile foreign government, a lot of universities have doubled down. Scientists at some Australian universities are collaborating with China's top military technology universities. That is insane. And because these are often public universities, that means Australian taxpayer dollars are indirectly helping the Chinese Communist Party's military. So now you might have an idea why University of Queensland, which just signed another five-year agreement with their Confucius Institute, might be so eager to expel a student like Drew Pavlou. No? Well, here's another piece of the puzzle. The school's vice chancellor, Peter Hoy, received a $200,000 bonus based partly on his success in growing the university's relationship with China. The vice chancellor and Drew Pavlou do not get along. In fact, you can hear all about that in the interview we did with Drew last week on our China Unscripted podcast. We do have a podcast, in case you didn't know. I'll put a link in the description below. This week, the university held a closed-door hearing about expelling Drew. The university said the hearing was to decide whether Mr. Pavlou had breached its code of conduct and brought UQ into disrepute, but maintained the case wasn't in relation to Mr. Pavlou's criticism of the institution's relationship to China. Right. Anyway. The hearing didn't go so well. Drew and his lawyer walked out. The UQ disciplinary panel has decided not to comply with its own rules. Its own rules require that Mr. Pavlo be given access to any documents that the university has that are relevant to defending himself. Drew's lawyer also said that since two out of three panel members 
were paid staff of the university, the panel would have been likely biased. Drew Pavlou and his lawyer say they will take this case all the way to the Australian Supreme Court if necessary. Meanwhile, the university panel has found Drew guilty on almost all of the charges and said that he has prejudiced the university's reputation. In response, Drew has continued to prejudice the university's reputation by saying that as a student elected senator, he officially represents the university when he calls for the CCP to be overthrown. And again, if you want to hear more of Drew's story, check out our China Unscripted podcast. I'll put the link below. And now is the time when I answer questions from you, my loyal 50 Cent Army, fans of the show who support what we do through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Today's question is from Edward Nutter. You really do have to find an alternative location to post your stuff. Searching on the title and YouTube found news items on the incident, but not yours. Unlike last time, it had been well and truly removed. Now, Edward was responding to a post I made about how YouTube has been removing our videos. But yes, it's become very clear to us that we need a backup to YouTube. So we're looking at developing our own website, one that can host all of our shows, China Uncensored, America Uncovered, and the China Unscripted podcast. It's going to be a long process, but that's where we're headed. And it's only possible for us to even do this because of the support from fans like you, Edward, on Patreon. With the way YouTube demonetizes or flat out removes our episodes, we wouldn't be able to afford making a website if it weren't for your support. So thank you. And thank you for watching. You can help China Uncensored continue to stand up to the Chinese Communist Party with as little as a dollar per episode. Head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. As a thank you, I might answer your question at the end of an episode. And if you can't give right now, you can still support the show by sharing episodes like this. Share it with your friends and family, and let them know about the incredible fight of Drew Pavlou. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.